Yeah, so uh, we start to talk about the second half of the introduction and in this uh, lecture we will take a closer look about uh, what we need to use for data science that means statistics, data mining and uh, machine learning uh, algorithms and methods that are going to help us to solve problems. Okay, so that will be the second half uh, uh, covering let's say the top types of data analytics algorithms and methods and also after that we are going to give a, a simple example to illustrate how we are going to uh, deal with data when we have uh, real problems okay so what kind of you know data analytics algorithm we are going to talk about so first that we start with uh, some statistic that we learn uh, last year or maybe uh, last few years okay so usually we have already learned some statistics so we're going to say see that okay given those uh concept and also tools or maybe some methods that can we uh, deal with the data set problems so after that we talk about data mining and we're going to give a brief introduction about what kind of data mining that could be useful for our topics and after that, it will be machine learning. And before everything that we're going to talk about, some the data, what kind of data that we deal with, some of the data uh, is not, of course, not going to be just one data record, right? So we are going to have a several. So for different uh, data records, so what kind of relationship between them? So we're going to uh, talk about that, about that briefly okay so what what's the situation so given uh for instance that there's some a uh, very common and simple situation is that uh, the data may be coming uh, as time goes by okay sometimes or maybe some situation uh, like uh, this situation right so then we are going to have your data with certain specific ordering so usually we call this uh, sequential data so can you tell what kind of data that we have right here okay so uh, the first on the left uh, is the, that we have a start market data right so down to the bottom is that we have the data so called the intelligent transportation uh, system so usually uh, on the road side we're going to uh, record, record the uh, a lot of information about vehicle traffic such as the, uh, the flow for occupancy and the speed so let's take the speed as uh, one example that people may be familiar with the most is that during the morning and during the afternoon that we're going to have uh, the traffic speed drop a lot okay so that means the heavy traffic due to the heavy traffic then we see the traffic speed drop a lot so this uh, example takes from a uh, California highway in USA where the, in the morning and in the afternoon we're going to see a lot of cars especially in the afternoon usually it will be heavy um, traffic so that we will have a significant delay when we are uh, driving on the road okay, on the right that we see uh, this uh, uh, temperature data uh, for a whole day 24 hours okay the red one uh, is actually uh, the outdoor temperature and the blue and green one will belongs to uh, two indoor sensors okay as we can see that during the near the noon we're going to see the temperature goes very high and and but indoor that we are going to say it, okay so uh, in the morning early morning and in the late evening okay we don't see a lot of difference between the indoor and outdoor but during the noon we're going to see that there's uh, air condition and to uh, cool down the temperature okay so then we see uh, down to the bottom to be two special kind of sequential data and when we don't see the uh, time right here but we're going to know that there will be still some kind of a uh, special ordering so the first one is the uh, 
the HTML data, and the second one is the genetic data. Okay, so the first one, as you can see, that we're going to uh, recognize this one a special kind of a uh, text format, and that can uh, we can use certain a uh, uh, reader to recognize what kind of data included in this part. Okay, as especially the uh, each of the alphabet right here will be uh, have a re related to a spatial uh, relationship. Okay, so we are going to read uh, following this direction to make sense of everything. So the down to the bottom will be a genetic data ACGT that belongs to a gene of individual with sickle cell amnesia. So uh, to to uh, avoid any details, we're going to say that this kind of uh, genetic uh, data will give us the hint about uh, uh, the individual with certain uh, phenomena, a certain phenotype that this individual has. Okay, so as you can see, all this data usually we are going to know there'll be special kind of order we have to pay attention to. So we are going to say that the data, let's say we collect in the early moment and the late moment, there'll be certain relationship. And also, if it's not, the time is not involved, we're going to say the data collect in the early uh, part and the late part, maybe there'll be certain relationship, okay? So this kind of relationship, we're going to say we have to better to pay attention to that. Okay, yeah. So that's uh, here is another example. Is that the data? Okay, here is the data for let's say the sensor collected in different locations in Taiwan. So we're going to have the temperature uh, collected, uh, for instance, near the east part of Taiwan, but belongs to different locations. As you can see that the temperature data from these two locations, we're going to see that they do have certain similarity. They do have a very similar pattern that we should uh, pay attention to. So so-called so -called, uh, spatial relationship we are going to talk about. So uh, other than that, between different days, like day one and day two, we also see some common uh, pattern. So that was we say the temperature relationship. So given these two kind of relationship, usually they'll be better to understand the data, uh, especially in this case. Maybe we're going to say, so when we don't have a lot of sensor, or maybe some sensor reading will be not reliable, can we still pick up, you know, the the temperature information even that we don't have a complete information? Uh, this kind of data completion auto completion or imputation means that uh, if we know the spatial and temporal relationship uh, building the data then we do probably don't need to have a lot of reading to save some energy okay so uh, you probably know that in the second half of this semester we're going to uh, focus on social network so here is also one kind of network thinking about that say in a class, maybe for different people, they do have some kind of relationship, right? Such as that the per, uh, the student one and student two may know each other, and student one and student twelve, they may not know uh, uh, too much. They, they may not know each other so well, right? So uh, this kind of uh, network may be also important uh, to understand, let's say, we say uh, we are going to say the data. Uh, they have this kind of network, and will be they say they depend on each other in such a network. Uh, uh, in such as a na network structure. Okay, so we we uh, also will have a special kind of algorithm to take care of this kind of relationship or dependency. And here is uh, another. Uh, kind of network and that we have a genome type and phenotype and for each node that we have a different gene they may be probably related to each other and also on the right we are going to know 
that say a lot of different uh, phenotype or a lot of different uh, behavior uh, for the uh, for uh, different individuals. Okay, so we're going to understand the genotype and phenotype relationship uh, using Bayesian networks. Okay, so it's kind of very uh, well known um, machine learning models. They that can help us to understand um, different part of uh, the items they could have a special kind of uh, connection so what is different from the previous case is that in this case we do have the directed edges in between and also to understand images such as that uh, sometimes we want to understand they say for some images, images they may not have a you know very clear uh, shoot right so maybe we're going to see a lot of noise so uh, can we try some algorithms to uh, remove those noise so that we can see a clear picture on the lab okay so this kind of uh, noise removal techniques rely on some algorithms or maybe some methodologies that we are going to uh, use so-called uh, uh, Markov random field, uh, where that uh, for each of the pixel we understand that as one node, okay, in the network, okay. So maybe down to the button we are going to have the network uh, to show the real intensity or color for each of the pixels, okay, on the images. On the top, we are going to have the observe. A value sometimes the observed value may not be so perfect that we have to do some adjustment to make it right so apparently between the internal the true uh, intensity intensity and also the observed intensity there'll be some relationship and also between neighboring uh, internal nodes or the internal pixels we can also have some uh, very close very similar color intensity. Okay, how, how to deal with this kind of network? This is also very important so that we can use this kind of network to find the uh, right picture or without a lot of noise. Okay, so uh, given all kinds of data, of course, we'll start with some uh, data when we don't have to pay attention to those data dependency, a very uh, special kind of dependency first, okay? We're going to start from something simple, okay? And also we are going to uh, record what we learn from a uh, statistic so that maybe we can uh, have a better understanding about the data before we do everything, okay? So, uh, what kind of statistics? So actually, in our previous uh, lecture or practice session, we already give you some uh, uh, situation like, okay, uh, given the statistic, can we do uh, some kind of job? So what I uh, give you is one kind of example. Uh, we can uh, take a look right here. Okay, so. Uh, so uh, in some situation we do we suppose like we want to compute the uh, a linear system like this part okay the linear system so so this kind of linear system usually we know very clearly that say uh, the x uh, can have the the solution when uh, we can compute x uh, equal to a inverse times b okay uh, remember that a is a matrix a, x and b will be vector uh, the a could be any kinds of matrix which means that in some specific uh, situation the a's inverse will be computable then we can get answer right here okay yeah so this kind of uh, formula we call the closed phone solution okay the closed phone solution right here meaning that it can be written uh, down by mass, right? So, but sometimes uh, may, we may not know 
uh, too much about the closed form solution like the in statistics a lot of uh, integral that we cannot really write it down okay and that's the situation that we don't have a closed form solution and we can only try some numerical a a method to help us so that's the situation that we need some iterative algorithms okay so of course we'll start with something that could be considered simple where we have a closed form solution but think about uh, this uh, case think about this uh, case that when we even when we have a closed form solution right here but sometimes when the matrix would be very big okay we still need some algorithm to help us to find out the solution so that's uh, the case when we need some iterative algorithm to help us okay so no matter what okay so statistics always uh, give us uh, something with very uh, very solid uh, base theoretical background so that we know the algorithm we know the situation better okay yeah so and so of course there'll be a good thing right but sometimes you know uh, given such a theoretical uh, that we can uh, formulate the real problem in some nice formulation right but we build out usually we, we rely on a lot of assumptions right to make sure that the system is uh, easy enough to describe in math right but it turns out that they may fail uh, in some uh, situation then they the assumption doesn't is not satisfied right so we are going to refine the model or maybe we're going to refine the the result okay so another alternative choice is that maybe we can combine uh, the statistics with some other method like a machine learning method maybe like a deep learning method and usually by doing this we can enjoy efficiency and effectiveness at the same time okay so we call that a marriage between model oriented and the data oriented approach okay Usually these days, the, the for deep learning approach, uh, we still, e even that we know the deep learning will be very powerful, right? But some uh, information or some knowledge borrowed from domain experts, but can actually uh, make the model easier or uh, lighter, so that we can have the similar model. We can have another lighter model but with similar performance okay in the end we have the uh, efficiency and also the effective effectiveness uh, remains to be the same so that's the perfect situation here okay so what the statistic can can give us in the end okay will be a lot of situation but we can uh, think about something very simple like uh, given a piece of data right so we can compute mean and standard deviation to describe uh, this piece of data such as that from time to time we're going to uh, use normal distribution if we want to describe a data in one dimensional right so we're going to have a different uh, sigma different variance uh, sometimes when the variance will be very small right we see the distribution will be very sharp or we have the variance to be very large and we see the distribution very flat okay and maybe we can also uh, recall what we learned for some common distributions like, such as Bernoulli distribution means that we flip a coin right for binomial we flip a coin for a few times and for multinomial we flip a die instead of a coin so many times okay so there'll be a discrete variable so on the other hand we also have continuous variable distribution where we have a normal distribution or where we have a laplace where that the uh, we don't have a square here okay all kinds of distribution maybe we're going to use them to describe our data set our data okay 
So uh, again, uh, given some very simple examples, given the data, as, as, as long as we can get more and more data work, we may try to uh, draw histogram to, uh, if we focus on some specific uh, numerical features. Okay, so we're going to draw the histogram like this, right? So remember that when we draw the histogram, we better to pay attention to uh, before everything, we can decide the number of bins and the bin size. Okay, such as here, right here, that we have a, a, a finer scale, fine, a smaller bin size. Right, right here, we have a bigger bin size. So different bin size, and even a different uh, bin middle point, that kind of different choices will give us different uh, output, or different visualization for the same piece of data. Okay, so we better to be careful about this. Okay, how about data visualization, right? So uh, from time to time, so we are dealing with statistics, right? We also use data visualization to help us such as that maybe uh, if we want to know the property and rental price in Amsterdam, we can use some heat map or use some different color information to give us uh, when they say the red uh, area means that the price will be very high okay so some cooler area like the blue uh, area means that the price will be very low okay this given this kind of uh, information we can easily pick up the uh, rough intuition about the the rental or property price if we want to have a place to stay in Amsterdam okay so this will be some other visualization belongs to the population uh, for different countries or maybe some living style in different regions of a uh, uh, place right so all kinds of you know a different visualization will give us different intuition I mean, we are going to build up, you know, intuition very quickly. Uh, hopefully, that intuition will going to help us to understand the data, or maybe to get a quick look about the data, so that maybe after that we can find maybe finer uh, other kind of uh, argument to deal with some specific uh, question. Okay. So as you can see that this this kind of visualization will give us a quick intuition about the data. But intuition may not be perfect, may not be 100% correct. We have to rely on some other algorithm or method to help us to uh, build up a stronger or maybe a final conclusion. Okay, so here is another example we are going to uh, uh, illustrate that's a given different kind of images, how they are related to each other. So on the right, we see a different uh, face images, right? And uh, actually those different dots, different blue points, uh, each of them uh, represents one image. As you can see that if we go follow the axis, Y X axis from the left to the right, we're going to see the image is turning to uh, horizontally to to the right okay and on the other hand uh, we are uh, also if we follow the y-axis we're going to see the uh, face uh, turning from the button to the top okay so this kind of uh, visualization uh, give us the information about uh, how different uh, face images are related to each other. On the left, we're going to see different kinds of uh, handwritten two. Okay, so we are going to see that, okay, uh, people do write two in different uh, way, right? Such as that uh, on the top, some people uh, write, you know, uh, uh, this a uh, small circle also on down to the button and also we see a small circle right so if we follow the axis 
uh, the x-axis, we're going to say from the left to the right, we're going to see more circle in the bottom part of 2. From the top to the bottom, we're going to see more circle on the uh, top half of the 2, right? Like this, okay? So actually, uh, given this kind of representation, actually this representation is from uh, the computation of ISO map. This kind of dimension reduction uh, method or techniques is going to help us to organize images, okay, when they do have certain relationship to each other. Okay, so the data visualization uh, in general will have a lot of uh, um, power. So when we want to understand a piece of data, right? So sometimes we rely on uh, more about the human ability to help us, okay? Where that we know that some method may not be perfect or maybe at the very beginning we don't know too much about the data so that we need to rely on a human perception uh, or maybe a very strong human visual uh, system to help us to understand the data or maybe get a good sense of the data at the very beginning, okay? And sometimes we also need to uh, pay attention to that, say, what kind of computer or hardware that we have. Okay, if we do have a very powerful computation, then probably we can uh, find out some specific pattern building in data. Okay, so visualization is a, is a way to integrate human ability and the computer ability. Okay, so that usually we do have a very powerful computation unit. Okay, so it's good that we can rely on visualization, data visualization to help us to understand the data. But do pay attention to that, say, the visualization could be very subtractive, so we better to uh, use it carefully. Okay, so uh, how to use the right visualization depends on when that we need visualization. So sometimes in the early uh, days or when we just receive a data, right? So maybe we can try explorative analysis such as that we don't know too much, right? We just try uh, all kinds of plots, right? To get a, a quick understanding about the data where that we don't uh, have a lot of uh, uh, pre-specified, predefined um, assumption about the data. So after that, maybe we already know what's going on about the data. Maybe we can try some confirmative analysis. So in this case, usually we already have some hypothesis, right? So we want to confirm this hypothesis would be correct or not, right? So in the end, we will be very uh, sure about what kind of story inside the data. Maybe uh, that's the time that we want to explain the data to others, right? maybe our both in companies, right? So here we need presentation style of the visualization to show what kind of story uh, about the data in some uh, very uh, simple uh, piece of uh, visualization or maybe figures, then they, we can uh, quickly understand what's going on about the data. Okay, so four kinds of ink extension. So sometimes we can try different colors. We can try to uh, use certain uh, interactions when we have a very powerful visualization system. Or maybe we sometimes we can even try 3D or try some animation, meaning another kind of 3D when the time is involved, right? So all kinds of visualization is going to uh, give us more power, but power to understand the data, but be careful, okay? Uh, because the human is always involved, right? So how human can easily pick up the information from the uh, visualization, that's the thing that we have to pay attention to. Okay, so then we turn our eyes to talk about uh, data mining. So data mining, uh, again, so it's a very belongs to different kind of discipline, right? So if we see 
the uh, picture like this, right? We're going to understand the data mining will be related by different kinds of disciplines such as data system, database systems, statistics we just talked about, visualization also, right? And also uh, machine learning and algorithms, okay? So to draw the things like this doesn't mean that data, science, data mining is the essential, right? It just simply uh, means that all these different disciplines should be related to each other. Okay, so for data mining, usually we pay more attention to the whole process of the data understanding uh, process, okay, such that maybe we start from the text uh, cleaning, okay, so when we collect the data, we do some uh, data cleaning, then we can build the data warehouse, and uh, after that, maybe for different tasks, we are going to select different piece of data, okay? Then we do data mining. Probably uh, we do some uh, plot or, uh, to guess uh, the pattern, or maybe uh, we use some kind of evaluation method to help us to understand the data so that in the end, we build you know knowledge, okay? So the whole data press process, of course, data understanding process, of course, that we call the KDD, uh, knowledge discovery uh, process, okay? So this will be very uh, important, okay, when we uh, receive a new piece of data, okay? So uh, you probably also heard about frequent item set uh, algorithms such as that uh, when we talk about data, data, data mining, usually we talk about given a lot of transactions, we find out there'll be some kind of correlation between beer and diaper, right? So given this kind of, you know, uh, of course, usually we don't know this kind of correlation uh, at the very beginning, right? So we just collect a lot of data. We collect a lot of uh, transaction data like this. And after that, we're going to find out what could be the frequent uh, occurrences, you know, uh, given this piece of data, right? So maybe occasionally we can uh, have, let's say if we focus on a milk diaper and the bread, for instance, any kinds of, you know, the frequent item set, right? So we can compute the occurrences, okay? Then this occurrences will divide by the whole um, number of uh, transaction data that we get the support, okay? When the support is stronger, then we see that it's highly uh, uh, likely that we're going to say, okay, when some people buy beer, they also buy diaper, right? Such that this kind of uh, conclusion may be found, okay? So uh, this kind of uh, this kind of uh, situation is that we actually uh, we don't know too much about the data, and we try to find out. It could be there's any uh, existing correlation building in this data so that later if we find out this correlation the next step is to find out why there's a such relation right okay then maybe we can do further things uh, maybe more to do more uh, promotion etc right for this kind of uh, application okay so that's the first uh, part of this uh, lecture. So let's take a rest for a few minutes and come back for another part of the so-called uh, machine learning can also be useful for data science.